warning a monarch. It was obviously not a huge surprise, but it was still a sad moment. As we check in on the British Embassy, remembering 9-11. It affected us psychologically, it affected us in every way. Here in South Florida and across the country, Plus, computer geniuses cracking the code on FIU's campus. FIU students are the top CS students in the nation, so we're very excited. These stories and more coming up on Newsbreak. Hello, South Florida. I'm Samantha Gutierrez. And I'm Julian Davis. Today is Monday, September 12, 2022. Live from the South Florida Media Network's Biscayne Bay Studios in North Miami, this is SFMN Newsbreak. We begin this morning with a new era for the Finns. Newly minted Miami Dolphins head coach Mike McDaniel getting showered with Gatorade after win number one. The Miami Dolphins kicked the regular season for the NFL off with a strong win over the New England Patriots here at home. The Miami offense looked fast, especially with Tyreek Hill as a new addition, but it was Miami's defense that won the game. Not to mention, this was Mike Daniel's first win as an NFL head coach, and his team couldn't be prouder. Hi. On behalf of Stephen Ross, Tom Garfinkel, the entire Miami Dolphin organization, congrats on your first win of the head coach. The final score was New England 7, Miami 20. And instead of McDaniel handing a game ball to one player, he gave one to every player. The Dolphins hit the road to face the Ravens next week at Baltimore. A moving moment at the Dolphins game as the family of the late Jason Jenkins is honored. Jason Jenkins, the former Dolphins Senior Vice President of Communications, passed away suddenly on August 27th at the age of 47. The cause of his death was a blood clot. Jason's family was invited onto the field before the kickoff to walk in his honor. The Dolphins franchise is mourning the loss of Jason, whose impact they say will last forever. Mourning continues today for the late Queen Elizabeth. More now from DC Bureau's Lydia Delgado, who visited the British Embassy. Washington, D.C. residents joined mourners around the world Friday at the British Embassy on Massachusetts Avenue to sign a condolence book in honor of the late monarch who died Thursday at the age of 96. Members of the public laid down bouquets of flowers, notes, and candles by a Union Jack emblem at the entrance of the embassy before lining up to record their thoughts on the Queen's life and legacy. You know, hugely uh, shocking moment. I tried to describe it to, to people this morning that it's one of those things that the Queen has always been there throughout most British people's lifetimes, and therefore it's just a sense of shock that that permanent gone and that uncertainty about what comes next and I think in terms of signing the book of condolence it's very much around paying our respect for the service that the Queen gave throughout her life and obviously her family around her as well just marking that moment in her legacy to the country and, and to the wider world. It was obviously not a huge surprise but it was still a sad moment a historic moment and then as a the British citizen living in DC I thought why not come over here and pay respects this way. President Joe Biden also fondly remembered the Queen and signed the condolence book hours following the news of her death. I just stopped by the British Embassy to sign the condolence book in her honor. I had the opportunity to meet her before she passed, and she was an incredibly gracious and decent woman. The thoughts and prayers of the American people are with the people of the United Kingdom and the Commonwealth in their grief. A period of mourning will continue until the Queen's funeral next week. During this time, all flags in federal buildings and territories nationwide are a half-mast. Folks can still stop by the Embassy to sign the condolence book today from 9 a.m. until 5 p.m., or sign a virtual version online at royal.uk. I'm Lydia Delgado in Washington, D.C. for the South Florida Media Network. This morning, a battle between the Justice Department and former President Trump. The Justice Department wants immediate access to classified documents seized from former President Trump's home, but a judge has ruled a special master should go to him first. According to the DOJ, it's a matter of national security. Former Defense Secretary Chuck Hagel says this public battle over the documents could make allies think twice about providing the U.S. with information. A Trump-appointed judge has paused the DOJ's review of the documents. Trump's response to that request is due this morning. It's the morning after the anniversary of the attacks on America. One remembrance was in Washington, where we find reporter Victoria Duran from our D.C. Bureau. Yesterday, President Biden delivered his remarks and laid a wreath in memory of those who lost their lives in 2001's September 11th terrorist attack, the most devastating attack to occur on U.S. soil. Twenty-one years ago, 
21 years and we still kept our promise. Never forget. We'll keep the memory of all those precious lives stolen from from us. The president gave his remarks in memory of the attacks where Al-Qaeda hijackers flew airliners into the Twin Towers, the Pentagon, and the crash of Flight 93 near Shanksville, Pennsylvania. And I know for all those of you who've lost someone, 21 years is both a lifetime and no time at all. While the president attended the ceremony held at the Pentagon, First Lady Jill Biden spoke at the Flight 93 National Memorial. Vice President Kamala Harris attended the National September 11th Memorial in Lower Manhattan. This anniversary marks 21 years since the attack that took the lives of nearly 3,000 people. Reporting for the South Florida Media Network in Washington, D.C., Victoria Duran. From D.C., we head now to Pembroke Pines. The network's Paloma Pimentel has more on a local 9-11 ceremony. We are here at Pembroke Pines Veterans Memorial commemorating the day of September 11th with the community, the fire rescue, and the police department. The city of Pembroke Pines hosted its yearly Patriot Day ceremony at the Veterans Memorial Park next to Charles F. Dodge City Center. It was an open-air gathering free to the public where children, veterans, and people from the community all gathered to commemorate the lives lost on September 11. The kids did amazing today and it just brings back just memories and I hope it made us closer as a country. I think we've gone away from that a little bit so I really hope we can come back. 9-11 was a pivotal moment in, in, in the nation. It affected us psychologically, it affected us in every way. Having known many of the people and the families that survived them that passed away on that on that terrible day, it's, it's an unforgettable experience. And many years from now, people will still remember that horrible day. I am Paloma Pimentel from the South Florida Media Network, signing off. Being near sea level and being in a tropical climate are two major reasons why South Florida has its eye on global warming. The network's Karen Antavilla has more on the program called Shading Dade. The Sea Level Solutions Center in the Institute of Environment plus the Department of Journalism and Media from FIU launched Shading Dade back in 2018. They held the event this past Saturday where volunteers measured just how hot Miami temperatures can reach. The temperatures only keep rising here in South Florida, and by joining Shading Dade, you'll be able to place metal sensors around the county to help keep track of the temperatures. Metal sensors will be distributed by volunteers throughout Miami-Dade and placed at designated locations for three months in order to keep track of the temperature. And we have a month more days, even since I moved here 27 years ago, with a heat index over 90 degrees, and we're going to see the highest increase of days over with a heat index over 100 of any other county in the country by mid-century. Analyst Per Lamonique Aquino explains how Shading Date uses the data that's collected. And, you know, being an analyst with the data, I have noticed that this does create the opportunity for us to sort of report this to the resilience offices, sustainability offices, and just Miami-Dade County in general, and involving, of course, other counties as well in South Florida. And this gives us the opportunity to create new projects that will help manage this extreme heat in the county. After three months, they take the data and use it to better understand where exactly are the hottest spots and why. This is Karen Altavilla for South Florida Media Network. A retired nurse from Florida is being celebrated as a hero this morning for what she did during a flight. That's still ahead and so is this story. So the goal of the entire event is to help hackers start from having no project to having a completed project that they submit for the potential to win a prize. Cody experts gather on the campus of Florida International University. Newsbreak will be back in two minutes. black truck. Hey, Christina from accounting. Yeah, hi. <laughs> hey, I used to date a girl named Christina. Oh, really? Yeah, and then she dumped me for my best friend. You want to see some photos of them that I took? I don't. I thought we talked about this, buddy. Buzz and overshared again? Yeah. Yeah. I'm gonna call a car. That's a smart idea. So yeah, I know. That's why I did it. Hey, you're gonna get back to the top of the mountain. 
Does that mean I'm gonna get back with Christina? No. Oh. No, no. If you love me enough to tolerate my perfect little pets and all their glorious dander, then of course you'll visit nhtsa.gov slash the right seat to make sure I'm in the right car seat. When I was growing up, my mom was extremely tidy. We were trained to put things back where we got them from. One day, when I walked into my mom's house, I felt like I walked to someone else's house. There was stuff everywhere. And just growing up, the way I grew up, and to see this transition was very alarming. When Sean talked to me, it was a wake-up call, and that's when I went to the doctor. Coding experts gather in South Florida for an event called Shell Hack. From Friday morning to yesterday afternoon, FIU hosted an event that brought together coders and hackers throughout all of Florida to one place. The network's Leanne Abu Tarbush was covering the action. Shell Hack's the largest hackathon here in Florida has brought over 2,000 contestants here at FIU. Sleeping bags, energy drinks, and high stress levels flooded BBC Coven Center in preparation for the 36 hours of building, hacking, and developing innovative solutions in the tech world. So the goal of the entire event is to help hackers start from having no project to having a completed project that they submit for the potential to win a prize, as well as possibly getting internships and interviews for full-time jobs. Microsoft, Google, and more than 40 sponsors join us at this multifaceted tech event focusing on different technologies, including AI, cybersecurity, and game development. FIU students are the top CS students in the nation, so we're very excited um, to be here uh, recruiting for Google. With a lot of teams competing to win valuable prices like MacBook Pro, AirPods, and an iPad, hacker Ricardo Garcia earned his spot as the first place winner after creating an epic racing game. Always the first thing I think of is think of your audience. And I know there's a lot of people here, so my audience is people who are going to be a little bit on a rush. So I came up with like the most popular thing you can find right now, which is like endless scrollers. You can play forever and there's no learning curve. You start playing, you avoid the obstacles and pretty much it. What a roller coaster this 36 hours have been, an event that fueled innovation and creativity in the tech world came to an end. Reporting for the South Florida Media Network, Leanne Abutarbush. It was a Thursday night flight headed to Orlando in which a retired nurse took it upon herself to save an infant after overhearing a worried flight attendant. Once she knew an infant was not breathing, Tamara Panzino wasted no time getting up and running to the back of the plane. After a round of questions, she performed a sternal rub in hopes that the baby cries and takes a deep breath. Spirit Airlines thanked Tamara, who is a hero, for her quick response. That's all the time we have for news break. I'm Julian Davis. I'm Samantha Gutierrez. Get more news anytime at sfmn.fiu.edu.